I think the irony of this whole um, topic, and I'm really pleased that the Children's Commissioner has brought it up, um, the irony is that uh, almost all cabinet members, and this has been true for a long time, uh, get married. They think it's important in their own private lives, um, overwhelmingly so. And yet in our public policy, uh, we discriminate heavily against married couples. We, the government will give you the impression that they will bribe, bribe you um, by, say, up to £250 in a transferable tax allowance. But you can stand on in the low income groups, you stand to lose thousands of pounds uh, in benefits or tax credits or universal credit uh, by living together, let alone marrying. So I think it's actually a miracle that anybody on low income gets married at all. Um, but it has produced this huge marriage gap. The rich are still marrying in their droves. And as you go down the income spectrum, uh, you find fewer and fewer people at the lower end uh, are getting married at all. And I think the state has, uh, plays a big role in this and politicians need to wise up to this. So I, I welcome um, Dame Rachel's uh, report on this subject. Yeah, but it's a tricky one, though, isn't it? Because, of course, you know, there used to be a push for, or well, not necessarily a push, just more societal norms for people to get married at the age of 18, 19, 20. But now we've got people living a lot longer. There's a lot more on offer. Tinder didn't exist when my grandma got married. And actually, do you want to kind of maybe force people to stick around in an unhappy marriage? Well, let's just deal with the unhappy marriage, the, 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 you know, the idea that you're in, if you're on an unhappy marriage, that you're going to be trapped in that forever. We did a study a few years ago uh, with my colleague, uh, Professor Steve McKay at the University of Lincoln, where we looked at um, unhappy parents, and it's mercifully only a very small percentage. Um, and about a third of those split up over the next 10 years, but, but the remaining two thirds overwhelmingly become happy. So the point of it is that happiness is, is a transient thing, and unhappiness particularly is a transient thing. Very few people, um, unfortunate as they are, uh, get trapped forever in these unhappy marriages. But the fact is that, you know, once even once you take into account uh, think factors like age, income, education, ethnicity, uh, religion, um, and whether the pregnancies are planned, you still find that people who are married are much more yeah. likely uh, to stay together than those who don't. Uh, I've got some stats here that I think our viewers, our listeners as well will find interesting. I'd love your reaction to there are differences when it comes to ethnicity as well. So 57% of black Caribbean, I'm just reading this now, 57% of black Caribbean and 44% of black African families were lone pairers. This is according to this latest data. That's compared to 22% for white British families. An astonishing stat here for me, 11% of Indian families, so just 11%, were headed yes. by lone parents. A, a staggering 87% fell into the married or civil partnership category. Now, I, I'm, clear, I'm not generalising here at all. I am just making a point of interest, really, which is I think that arranged marriages are more common in certain cultures than in others, and specifically when it comes to, you could say, uh, Asian and Indian cultures as well. That's just a thing. That's, that's mm -hmm. an accepted fact. Is that an yeah. advert for arranged marriage? I think, I think you make a really interesting point. I don't actually know of any um, studies that look specifically at arranged versus uh, romantic-based marriages. I, don't, I, I haven't seen any on that basis. What I can tell you is that we'd look, we looked, again, um, Steve McCain, my pr uh, professor at University of Lincoln, and I looked at um, the influence of ethnicity on family stability. And once you take into account, again, age, education, income, all that sort of stuff, and even marriage and even happiness, uh, we found that uh, Indian and Pakistani and Bangladeshi mothers were more likely to stay together than any other group, and black fathers were least likely to stay together than any other group. And the two big factors which seemed to make a difference were that uh, marriage is much more common amongst uh, Islamic groups uh, and less common amongst black and white groups, although the, uh, the black groups do even worse than the white groups in terms of stability. Uh, so there's something about marriage. But even after that, there's still this, there's some cultural difference. And you might be right. It might be that arranged marriage uh, plays a part. There's some very interesting research on where you marry uh, people of different religious faiths um, your breakup rates and your happiness are likely to be less. So it's the more things that we have that are different between us, and certainly in fact, these foundational values of 
what socioeconomic group we belong to, what religious group we belong to, what ethnic, ethnic group we belong to. If we come from different backgrounds, it's clearly, it's a lot more difficult to manage a relationship. You've got a lot more things you can argue over. Um, and, and you can, by removing some of those factors from the equation, then um, with arranged marriages, then you might be absolutely right. That might be a major factor. I don't know, but I suspect you're probably right. 